above and beyond, you think your house is not worth more or you think your house is worth it's more? Not worth what the appraisal district So you should fight that with them. Okay. You should appeal that with and them. Then, Probably because of the air, the area, area around there is appreciating and the land value is increasing. So a lot of times it's based on the land value. DD-214. There we go. DD-214. Do you have any of that? Or? No. So normally you would have that information, but you would also reach out to the VA. Yeah. And, okay. yeah, they actually have a whole department for it. So okay. just you tell them that you want aid in attendance, and they'll go on here and get the paperwork started for you. The thing is, it does take about, yeah, like 90 <laughs> days or so. It could take a little bit longer for it to get approved. But the good thing is, is if you're already in the community, they retro pay. I have a question. I'm sorry. <laughs> Are you guys having a great time today? Yeah. 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 Can we give her a round of applause? Yeah. I'm just not invited to say hello. I'm Council Member Edwards. Thank you so much for doing such a wonderful presentation. And I love these questions. So stay engaged. I'm sneaking out. So again, thank you all for being here. Thank you. Thank you. But you have an asset. So to go into a senior place. No, 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 it's for assisted living. So oh, assisted living. living. So it was all okay. private pay, so not that part. But yeah, that's actually a really private good Private pay, yeah. If you have somebody to manage, manage it or, you know, you're still able to manage it on your own, I think that's a phenomenal idea. Especially if, if it's you, you know, if it's you a little bit more bang for your buck. Yeah. Every, every, every month you have money coming in. So all you have to do is pay your taxes and uh, insurance. When it works well. When, yeah. when they pay. Yeah. <laughs> when they don't care. Yeah. 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 So are we talking about independent living, assisted living, or are we talking about long-term care? Independent. You can do that. It, it's, 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 it's no big deal. Um, it's just like how you would do it, anything. Um, because independent living is just like you being in an apartment. Uh -huh. it's, so you're just giving or willing something to your children. Now, in that instance, though, if you're talking about long-term care, you have to do that five years ahead of time in order for you to qualify for the spend out. Yeah, we gave them some time. When you die. 
Right. So when you establish the trust, you would in your you read title to so you have to establish the trust first before you can read title. But there is a doc. Don't transfer your deed to your children while you're still alive. We can talk about that if you have any questions on it. There is a thing called death on deed. Yeah, deed on death. So that it doesn't go through probate. It'll go directly. Well, you just get it notarized. You can pull it up online in Harris County and get it notarized. And then once you die, it'll transfer automatically to that person that's named on there. What, the taxes and all that, too? Mm. I'm just curious. Mm -hmm. That's a long case. I'm having to find it. On your, if you haven't transferred within the five years, unless the state has changed it since our last year, or home, and you haven't moved it in a long-term care, you don't have to spend out. Is that check on your application, you intend to return home. You don't have to give your home. Ah, loophole. See, we're at the first session. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there is a five-year look-back period um, mm -hmm. for, and a three-year for certain items. So she's she right. Can you repeat that part? They, <laughs> uh, usually, nursing home, long-term care, you can't just transfer something into somebody else's thing, especially your home. Your home is exempt. I don't care if you don't intend to return home, you can't return, but if you check on that application, it's legal, you intend to return home, they can't take you home. You can't make yourself. So, yeah. mm, okay. There was a question over here. She said it's better to have a trust than a will. She asked her the question. Oh, is it? Yes. Yes. You intend to return home. Is it, her question is, is it better to have a trust than a will? Oh, absolutely. Without a doubt, yes. A will yes. equips you to go to probate and say, hey, I'm entitled to this because I'm a relative. But you still got to go through the probate process. Mm -hmm. And the probate process is based upon however the state takes to get to you. The trust skips all that. Exactly. And it's private. When you go through the probate process, everybody knows your dirty mind. Right. You go through a trust, nobody knows. Okay, so the trust is five ninety five. The trust. Do you have to pay more? Two hundred. Uh, Two hundred more if you have a deed. You don't necessarily have to, to own a home to have a trust. And my, my execution fee is three hundred dollars. And then the, uh, the county five ninety five plus three hundred dollars. Plus two hundred if you have a deed. And my execution fee is three hundred dollars. And then there is a filing fee of fifteen, depending on which county you live in, Harris or Fort Bend. 15 and 20 for Harris, 15 for Fort Bend. Can I say this? Uh, 19 years in the business, all the rich she's quoting, never heard that about. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So if anybody's saying, hey, that sure sounds like a lot, it's because it's worth it. Yeah. Because if you don't want everybody knowing your business, then you're gonna have to pay, you're gonna have to open up trust. If you want it to go directly to your relatives and have them be protected, you're gonna have to go to the trust. There's no way around. No, it's a one-time fee. I'm sorry. <laughs> the difference with the will is uh, you basically are telling uh, your survivors, this is who I want to execute my will, and this is how I want my assets distributed. However, if you're, all of your assets are titled to you as an individual, whether you own a vehicle, home, whatever it is, motor home, this, these items have to go to probate, the probate court, mm -hmm. and it's public record. It takes on average two years for that process to take place. Whereas with the trust, everything is private and it, it's passed down to your heirs the way you wanted it to. It's very <laughs> difficult to penetrate a trust. Whereas with the will, you, it's less, you, it costs much less for a will. A trust is a bit more expensive in the front end, but in the back end, it saves your heirs a lot of time and headache and stress. Mm -hmm. 
She asked what the executor. Yeah, I'm asking what's the difference between uh, going to court to become an executor of an estate than in the will. Oh, I didn't say the difference. <laughs> what's, what's the difference? If there's no will, there is, if there, oh. there's no will, if there's no and will. you have to go to court to become the executive of the estate, then... Oh, I see, I'm sorry. If you die interstate, so the question is, if you don't have a will, meaning you die interstate, the court will provide the executor for you. Usually it's a court-appointed executor. Oh, no. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes, and sometimes, sometimes, if you can prove that you can you are capable of executing this will, the court will grant you the permission. How can you I go from a will to a trust? Easy. You establish a trust. Call me and I'll show you how to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not doubting you, but I had to become an executive of my husband to stay when he died because we didn't have a will. I didn't have to do all of that. Because it's, you know, that's the difference now. Oh, that's she that's is a spouse. Generally, when you have a survivor, it just rolls up to the survivor. Yeah. There is no problem. Right. When the when the second to, when the second person to die uh, passes on, that's when you have an issue. Yeah. But you have no problem. You you hooked. You know, so it rolls up to you. No problem. I'm sorry. I didn't understand the question. Okay. No, if a family they have a child, you know, grown up, grown up, uh, you know, child who cannot take care of himself or herself, um, how can we set up a trust that he doesn't have to do something, but the money will go periodically to him for his care? Okay. Her question is: If you have a special, a special needs child, yeah. how can the assets pass on periodically to the child? Well, you can go to a, a financing company like uh, Dion's company, like Merrill Lynch, uh -huh. or a bank, uh -huh. and periodically, when you establish that special needs trust, they will uh, distribute the funds, whether it's quarterly, uh -huh. semi-annually, uh -huh. or whatever. One more question. One more question. What's the, uh, what's the longest time you have to do a probate after a death? Uh, it, it, it will vary. It depends on the size of the estate, the attorney doing it, because the longer they take, guess what? The smaller your estate becomes uh, to be able to pass on to your heirs. But on average, it's two years. <laughs> on average. But again, it depends on the size of the estate. What needs to be distributed. And we have time for a couple more questions. Her question is, if you have a special needs trust, do you have to pay every pay an attorney every month for the CD? You can choose an attorney, but I won't recommend that you do that. Uh, I would recommend that you, you do it through a, fi uh, a bank or Merrill Lynch, one of those uh, uh, financial services companies. Okay. They're going to charge anywhere. Depends on how much, but anywhere from 1 to 3% annually. How much is the value of that house? Depends on how much is the value of that house, right? The value of your house. Yes. The value of the house. The value of the yes. whole The state. assets. Yeah. Okay. The assets. Okay. So real briefly, um, because she has a booth out there, I want to... Sharonica, um, because earlier in our session we were talking about low-income independent living housing. Um, so I want her to, to talk a little bit more on that. What to look for? Um, so first of all, she she's like me. Uh, she's a locator. So if you tell her exactly what it is that you're looking for, oh, she wants you to come over here. Oh, I didn't see her. <laughs> <laughs> front and center, front and so, center. So she's a locator like myself, so she'll do the legwork for you. And you tell her everything it is that you're looking for, down to the specification, down to the 
area. Now, mind you, you might have to be a little flexible if we're talking about input, right? So it might be easier for you to go, I'm just making this up, a little bit more west. The majority of the people that we serve, uh, let me back up. So any, everybody in here has probably heard of Shelter and Arms Senior mm -hmm. Services yeah. before. Okay, so now we're called Baker Ripley. Yeah. Okay, so I just want to disclaim, because everybody knows this is Shelter and Arms. So the majority of the people that we serve are low income people and everybody, normally that's the people who make, the majority of the people we see make under $1,200 a month. So we all know it's impossible to really try to find housing in Houston for that price, especially as you get older, you can't afford that. So one of the things that we do in our in-house, we have social workers, all of them are, we only work with seniors. So I like to describe our line as a 211 for seniors. So we only deal with seniors. So what? Just like she said, we kind of do the footwork for you. We find out what zip code, what area, what your restrictions are, what